Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and welcome to another episode of Deep Web Browsing, episode number 86 this fine Sunday. As always, today we're going to be looking at websites that are a little too dank for regular viewing, ladies and gentlemen. These are some of the sites found on the uh, hidden parts of the internet. So what are we going to find today? As always, it's going to be a set of random websites, maybe funny, maybe conspiracy, maybe weird, maybe aliens, maybe some drugs, maybe some illicit stuff. But ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoy this fine Sunday. I hope uh, this uh, video piques your curiosity. And I hope you enjoy it, because for now, we're going to go dive headfirst into our very first website. With that being said, hope you enjoy Deep Web Browsing episode number 86, and before we reach the end, I hope you have an amazing Sunday as well. Let's go into the very first site. So, uh, the first site we've come across is How to Spot a Pedophile, ladies and gentlemen. Now, uh, it seems to be a site that is going to uh, tell us exactly how to find people that are into little kids, but, uh, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not an expert at locating, you know, how to fucking identify a pedophile, but this site seems to have some scientific medical accuracy. I don't fucking know. Let's read it. Ever see a guy at work or school who sends off creepy vibes? I see a guy every day that fucking, you know, sends me creepy vibes. It's called looking in the mirror. And you say to yourself, man, I know that guy. Wow, Jesus Christ. I don't think I've ever fucking said that now. Some mental health doctors claim that there's no way to tell a pedophile apart from anyone else just by looks alone. Wrong. I scoured the FBI's most wanted list and found some examples that confirm my theory. And here's what to look for. You know, I don't think they're wrong. I don't think you can tell somebody's, uh, like, sexual, like, fucking preferences, I guess. Just, just you know, I don't think it rubs off on, like, I don't think you can look at somebody's skin and say, oh, yeah, that guy fucks kids. I don't think that's how it works, but let's go look at this FBI uh, most wanted medical accuracy. So, this man apparently is a pedophile. <laughs> By the pedos, my obvious is a joke fucking sight. This guy does not look like a pedophile. That guy just, that guy just looks incredibly unhappy, I guess, so to speak. I mean, I would be too if I was on, you know, fucking mugshot or something like that. On the left is Mark David Keller, wanted for paying young homeless boys for sex. Notice a telltale sign of a man who has a penchant for boy ass. The pedophile smile or pedo smile, it's part... You gotta always look outside, because my neighbors are, like, fucking out there sometimes, so it's like, I don't want them fucking hearing me, you know, yell about boy ass or something. It's part smirk, part grin, and all molester. It's like he's having a two-for-one sale on, oh my lord, no refunds or exchanges. On the right is John Henry Ramirez, wanted for plain old capital murder. Notice the cold gaze and no smile. Definitely not a child molester. I don't know, man, you know, fucking... It could be, it could be, both of them could have done the exact same thing. That guy could have fucking fucked little kids and killed people and vice versa for Ramirez, you know. I, I think Ramirez is just a little less remorseful because he's probably more killer than molester. But who knows, man? You can't tell. All right. Notice the cold days, definitely not. Probably. Here's a chance to test your pedometer. <laughs> You're a fucking cheeky cunt. Take this quiz to see if you can spot the pedophile. Choose yes or no for each suspect. Oh, they got a fucking quiz. Jesus Christ. All right, let's see. Fernando Arenas Colazo. He looks pretty sad, so I'm going to have to go no. Dennis Ferguson. Oh, yeah, he's definitely touched little kids. The G. <laughs> he's done. Oh, fucking. Oh, my God, dude. They have a big Lebowski reference. Calvin Maurice Cooley, probably. Uh, Elizabeth Anna Duke, yeah. Uh, oh, definitely. Uh, LB Horrors. Uh, John Bolton. Yeah. Saad Eku Echaufni. Man, I really hope I pronounced that right. Fuck yeah, sure, go for it. William Claybrook. You know, I'm probably gonna have to go yeah, because I feel like, de yeah, yeah, I'm probably gonna have to go in there. Shake. You see, yeah. Richard Steve. That's Ray Gold, dude! What the fuck? Oh, for those of you who don't know... Back in the days of, like, LimeWire and Casa, I know, I'm fucking dating myself when I say that. Back then, like, before Torrents and shit, and even, even with Torrents, we used to, like, a lot of people use LimeWire and shit to share music, right? LimeWire, LimeWire Pro, which you could have fucking torrented off regular LimeWire and got Pro. Or you could use Kaza or Casa, whatever the fuck it was called. But basically... You would connect to these groups and you could download whatever the fuck you wanted. A lot of people used it to like share music illegally and stuff. And there was like different kinds. There was like Kaza, there was LimeWire, there was MP3 Rocket or some stupid shit like that. But there on LimeWire at least, if you typed in the tag Ray Gold, I don't even think LimeWire is a thing anymore at all. In, in fact, hold on, let me let me just Google it real quick. Is LimeWire still even a thing? Is it? I'm sure it's not. LimeWire. Uh, no, it doesn't, no, it doesn't seem like LimeWire's a thing. Is Kaza there? Kaza or something like that? 
No, no, it's not even there at all, ladies and gentlemen. So none of these file sharing technologies are like still actually up, like they're all gone. But the thing is, on all of these, what you could do was if you typed in Ray Gold, except replace the A with the at sign, and like all of it was low case, you would come across this dude's like videos and shit. Because this guy was a pretty fucking intense child molester, right? So like you would come across this dude's videos and... You know, it would just be fucking, it would, it, would ju it would just be child porn distributed and anybody who typed it in found it. Now, of course, uh, on those P2P networks, you know, you could pretty much backtrace whoever the fuck was downloading shit just like you could do with Torrent. So, like, downloading Ray Gold is like a guaranteed way. You shouldn't have been doing it in the first place, but if you fucking did it, you, you're going to jail, dude. Oh, my Lord, that fucking, holy shit. I read the whole thing on that, dude. Patty and Ken, yeah, you know, I'm going to fucking go yes on everyone except Bulger, dude. And it doesn't look like a pedo. Nah, it doesn't look like one either. Warren Giffs? Nah. John Tr Laurie Trites? Yeah. Senorita Walker? Yeah, I'm gonna go there. 1.6 million people suspect their co-workers daily. Back to how much I rule. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a site by Maddox. And of course, these are fucking old sites. 2006, dude. That's over a decade old. Oh my god. But this is a pedophile test for you to test a pedophile. And I guess... Out of all the things in this episode so far, I guess I told you a little history of one of the more fucking suspected pedos out there, Richard Steve Goldberg, dude. <laughs> fucking Ray Gold, man, I swear, dude. It used to be a fucking big-ass thing back in there. You can, like, go on, like, Encyclopedia Dramatic or some shit like that. Or, like, any respect, or, like, any fucking, you know, internet archive and, like, fucking find out articles about this dude. It was fucking weird, man. But, uh, you know, we're going to back out. We're going to we're going to stop spotting pedophiles. I think we've got all. Our, I hope this has taught you how to find local pedos, but uh, I'm going to back out of this and hit up something else, you know. So here is Sorp Films. Ooh, SorpFilms.net, ladies and gentlemen. OK, want to help us make more films and blow things up? Uh, things think we got some pyrotechnic porn going on here. Feel free to do donate any amount it all helps you can use the link below no paypal needed you can just use a credit or debit card yeah i'm gonna put my credit debit card on this any donations of 15 bucks or more 15 dolans or more gets you executive producer credit on our next 15 dollars gets me executive producer holy fucking shit what's the death hearse on satan's titty highway oh my fucking god dude jesus christ fuck my life see the preview trailer below now unfortunately we can't because we don't have adobe flash but they've got death hearse on satan's t i feel like i'm on a fucking porn site right now new film online nine inch nail parody closer to bingo show your friends cross post it share it cross post here it is important oh they have a youtube page what the fuck let me go to the youtube page oh my god oh my god they have a youtube page all right, la la ladies and gentlemen, they have a whole YouTube page. Incoming transport. They have a Kickstarter? Oh, my Lord. No. Nurse Necro MD and Zombie Vice Squad is a comedy horror film mixing gore and... Ch Why would you need a deep website to advertise your fuck... Well, they met their they met their pledge, ladies and gentlemen. 2,500. Pretty fucking fine. You know, they're in Denver. Why the fuck would you need it? Nurse Necro follows the life of Natalie Necro, a nurse at Jesus H. Christ Memorial Hospital, a vile and evil medical institution. Oh my god, I'm fucking cutting myself on the edge. Upon discovering that some of the doctors are experimenting on the homeless, she sets out to stop them, but the senior staff is not going down without a fight and replaces one of her tampons with the plutonium rod from the... Oh my god. I'm actually not even reading this. This is a fucking dream. Anyone familiar with medical science can tell you this was not successful. And of course... <coughs> and of course caused her to mutate into a deadly, but still considerably sexy killing machine. Although the trappings of the movie are horror and comedy, I'm also uh, seeking to address deeper issues, namely topics of abnormal sexuality and the toll it takes on the people who feel judged by it, as well as the underlying causes. Hey man, if you want, if you want, if you want to jerk off while you choke off, then... By all means, go for it. I ain't judging you. I ain't gonna kink shame you. We live for the feedback of people who are telling us blah, blah, blah. Uh, to make all our films in true underground status for usually around $100, we have accomplished great things in the budget. So this is an underground movie, Nurse Necker. I'm not gonna play it because, you know, fuck, it could be... I don't know, dude. I'm not gonna fucking bother going into it. But Zachary Byron Hell, man, you have gotten some fucking ideas that I could... Yeah, honestly, I would like to watch this movie just because it's the first time I've heard of a fucking concept so out there. 
Now, unfortunately, uh, oh shit, wait a minute. He has like, he, he has a point in this video. Here we go. Oh my God. Wait, what? No, no. Yeah, there we go. All right. What is this? If you look at it, important trends, this is what he wants to do. So he wants to do off track dog betting, near drug, near track dog betting, twilight books, Coldplay albums, battle contests. How? <laughs> a sex change for my cat, shitty Apple products, contraceptives, premium sexual lubricants, Glenn Beck. <laughs> Can't do the fuck is my life right now? Uh, hentai, which is probably the most normal fucking thing on there. Regular porn. <laughs> Tentacle porn. Wait, regular porn for <laughs> normal people? Porn from Japan that's so fucked up you haven't seen it. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, this, this man's got some fucking genres to, to destroy. Donating is used. A lot of donation links. Let me see what the donation link's probably pretty active right now. That's for Nurse Necro MD. You already got the money, though! You already got the money! Why do you need more? This is not a fucking high budget movie, dude. Ultimate Rockability Street Cred. A Lucky 14 shirt. You can buy a Lucky 14 shirt if you want. Skull of Regret is now online based off the popular comic. This guy makes a lot of movies, I gotta say. That's pretty fucking sweet. The League of Extraordinary Industrial Retards. The League of Extraordinary Indu it's online, folks. Scroll down to watch it now. I <laughs> That I, I literally have come across some fucking gold is what I have come across, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus, what is this stuff? Emo Assault Squadron will give you something to cry about. Oh, shit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Here, let's go to their store. If you go to the store, you can buy their t-shirts, which... How expensive are these t-shirts, by the way? Can I can I get a can I get an accurate uh, can I get an accurate detail on these twenty five bucks USD? You can go fuck yourself. All right, let's go down. Emo Assault Squadron Sorp ID badges. Agent Zachary Helm. You can get oh my lord, I want to get an ID badge. You can get their armbands. Is this dude holding a fucking? <laughs> Jeez, he's holding fire. What in the fuck, dude? Sorp Films DVD. She's got a snout and everything. Is oh my god, is that a Zelda? Dude, is what is the Legend of Zelda pain in my ass? Oh my god. Emo Salt Squadron, my life. Wait, that's the DVD. You can get all the movies on there. My Life in Poo, the League of Extraordinary Industrial Retards, book one advanced release. <laughs> Was that a little fucking joke, you asshole? Emo Salt Squadron recruitment video, the zit, the anti-piracy parody, interview and commentary. You know what? This dude seems like the fucking funniest guy imaginable. Like, you know what? I actually would probably fucking want to get one of these DVDs, honestly. It's probably it's probably the greatest fucking thing imaginable. Join Sorp. Go to Evil Kick Ass. What is that? Well, it's a dead site, so she ain't really going to Evil Kick Ass. Let's go to their message boards. No, no, Evil Kick Ass. Oh, their message board is down, dude. What is the... Oh, here's the crew. You got Zachary Byron Helm, who's writer, actor, director, and creator of this god-tier content. You have Desiree Stark, who's an actress... She's been in Emo Thirst, the PBJ video, My Life in Poo. You got Richard Coleman, who does the actor and soundtrack. You got Kevin Henry, who's a cinematographer. Dragon Casimir, who's the actor, web help, and he's a badass, like certified medical medical grade badass. You got Uber Soldat, which is the graphic designer. That's some pretty cool graphic work. Aubrey Ellen Shomo, who filmed The Legend of Zelda Paint. You got this whole fucking team. Oh my god. You know what? It's awesome. I love I love these guys. I really fucking love them. What is this? First three installments are online. Can I watch this? You can totally watch it. Oh my god. You know what, ladies and gentlemen? I'm so glad I've located Horse uh, the Sorp Films. That is actually this is actually the fucking most interesting site. I don't know. I don't really know what more to say. I have no idea what's what's on the tip of my tongue. Like I don't know if it's supposed to be edgy or if it's just supposed to be a giant fucking joke, but they've got a new movie coming out, Nurse uh, Nurse MD, and uh, and her quest to save the unfortunate patients of Jesus uh, <laughs> Jesus H Christ Hospital. Um, if you want to check it out, I, I suppose go check it out. If you want to donate to them, by all means, go for it. <laughs> they seem like a bunch of interesting underground movie filmmakers, so you know, hats off, man. You you gave me a nice chuckle. Well, what are the pictures, Ed? Industrial retards after shooting. Oh, man. They, they look like the happiest group of friends ever. You know, honestly, God, God bless them. All right. Yeah. Good for you, filmmakers. I enjoy it. All right. 
as a as a fellow person in the biz to another fellow person in the biz good for you let's hit up another site all right ladies and gentlemen we have our deep web video of the week it starts off with a lovely front view front side left view of a of a car it's about 50 seconds long ladies and gentlemen i'm gonna put my fucking headphones on and frankly we're gonna see just what kind of edgy shit we've got but right now i'm already feeling fucking glad that uh we have no fucking weird vcr font at least hopefully throughout the rest of the video let's hit play and actually, let me just go over here to Volume Mixer and just fix it up a little bit, just so it doesn't assault my ears real quick. There we go. Let's hit play and see what this is all about. Well, that's not creepy at all. What the fuck? This dude's going around a car? Better not be somebody... Uh, excuse me? Well, we're still playing the video, yeah. If I see some fucking dead person, dude. Okay. Seems like we got a knife. And it's about to fucking stab the tires. Okay, so you have somebody cutting tires, it seems. Now, okay. Obvious creepy baby music aside, you know. Doo, 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 you know, it didn't fucking scare the shit out of me, of course. But uh, what weirds me out of you, so you have a nice, like, Mitsubishi. It's a Mitsubishi Lancer just, like, fucking sitting over there. Nice car. Why, 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 why you gotta harm the car? But, like, the thing is, you go around, the dude, like, fucking, the person walks around, looks at the vehicle... And then you get this black screen for, like, fucking basically the majority of the video. And then it cuts back to the tires. And the dude has a fucking knife. And you know what? He goes up to the tire, puts the knife on it, and that's it. Oh, my fucking... You know what? There's a thing, all right? Like, maybe, like, 40 episodes ago, I would have sat here and been like, oh, my God, what the fuck could this mean? Could this be somebody, like, trying to fucking... Could somebody have been in that car? You know, somebody might have been in that car. But at the end of the day, I feel like I'm going to take my phone out one day. I'm just going to go up to, like, like an old car or something, you know? N not any van. I wouldn't promote vandalism. Hell no. And I would just, like, have a knife, put it up to my tires, and I'd have this, like, really ominous, creepy music. And, like, dun, 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 dun. In fact, I'll have that dun, dun, that I'm doing right now as the music. And you know what? That would be your deep web video because that's basically what a lot of these are, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know why, but this is some fucking weak sauce shit. But you know what? At least I can say, well, like... I think the best video we've had in a while was, like, the deep web vlogs where, like, fucking, you know, the dude was, like, running around, like, fucking making no noise, like, recording people at night and shit like that. That was we That was interesting stuff. The text on the, the, t the VCR text, that was like, are you coming? Are you following us? Did you find us? Hexadecimal number, 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 number was, like, cutting it. And then here you got this one over here where it's like, I got I to gotta spook someone. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take my phone. I'm going to record real quick. And I'm gonna I'm gonna try put it I'm gonna I'm gonna put, put tires with a little knife and that'll spook people. You know what? I fucking guarantee you, if I saw like a snippet out of Sorp films, that would be spooky. But for now, I'm gonna end this where it's at, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think there's many more analysis that I can much more an analysis I can really give this shit. Lady, that was that was our deep web video of the week. Fifty seconds of of edgy material. Let me know what you think about it. Is there somebody in the car? Was there somebody not? Let me know. This is me, Mudahar, and uh, let's let's get out of here. Here is a website that I've come across called The Legend of B.S. Zelda homepage. This contains information about B.S. The Legend of Zelda. B.S. The Legend of Zelda, Ancient Stone Tablets, and Triforce of the Gods. Now, it seems like we have a pretty active site over here. Like, well, active in the sense that it was updated literally November of last year. So, you know, good shit. Good, good stuff over there. For those of you who don't know, the B.S. Legend of Zelda games for the Stella View actually don't even know that system with not so familiar overworlds and complete new dungeons these games were only playable in japan and only for a few hours the page's objectives is to allow everyone to experience these wonderful games by providing you patches meant to fix any flaw in emulation and even to simply improve your enjoyment of the games confused don't know what a stellar view is or why it's only allowed to play these games for a short time you can find that all made uh, all of that or more in this video made by rue from clan of the gray wolf as part of a 16-bit gem series 
This almost looks like one of those old uh, YouTube like gaming site. Oh my god, dude! Old YouTube gaming used to be the fucking shit. Like you would find like it wasn't even just ABGN. Like if you if you dug far into it, there used to be this one channel that I'm trying to remember. Fucking game life. Oh my god, how could I not remember that? I was like that was way back. That was when I used to look at like game videos. Like that wasn't even like that was a site that's completely defunct. But there was like there was like all these like gaming channels. They were actually like the biggest ones out there. I think they like they flew them out to like E3 one fucking year. I don't know not nothing. They were like the original fucking PewDiePie. You know what I mean? They were like the biggest motherfuckers on the they were like I think like two, three, four people that just like got together and started like making these videos. This reminds me just a little bit of that. Sorry for the little tangent on that, but like this reminded me of fucking game life of all things. <laughs> if you don't know what game life is, seriously look up game life. It is probably the fucking awesome as shit out there like these, pe these people predicted i think like literally they, they predicted a lot of shit but they had like a lot of interesting reviews it's it's pretty <laughs> it's pretty cringy but you know back then on the internet we uh, surprisingly didn't make fun of people for retarded reasons but let's go into this and see just what this game is because i'm interested i've never heard of bs zelda in my life i've never even heard of stella view but do not feel like reading a lot of boring text all right here we go i, I don't know i'd rather read the boring text i can't really play a video the Stella View was a satellite uplink unit. It linked up to a system called ST Giga, which is just a normal digital satellite channel, except instead of just downloading video images, you instead download games, demos, cheats. That's actually really fucking interesting, Jesus. ST Giga was a normal TV channel as well, and the data you could download only made up a small fraction of the channel's airtime. You couldn't download something anytime you wanted, only for a certain time, just like watching a movie on TV. Okay, so like maybe six to seven you were allowed to download shit. Interesting. The data you downloaded was stored in a Game Boy style cartridge. It plugged into a device called a BSX Special Broadcast Cassette. This looked just like a Super Game Boy, which in turn plugged into an SNES cartridge slot. The memory cartridge held one megabit of flash. That was a lot of fucking memory at the time. Don't 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 judge. The new base unit, the one under the SFC, had 512k of memory added to boost the SNES's onboard memory. It also had a 1 megabit ROM chip in there as well, which held the OS, and a 256k flash memory chip inside, just in case the user hasn't paid for a memory cart and another S50 for the Super Game Boy style adapter. It had an AV slot, blah blah blah, various software companies, the device itself can't be emulated. Whilst in theory it is, I'm sure linking up the satellite device would prove troublesome, apart from the fact that there is no need to emulate the Stella View, as many of the games releasing on it were found to be floating around the internet anyways. Which is actually really interesting to me. I've never really heard of the Stella View. I've heard, like, the, Nintendo was interesting back then. Because, like, what Nintendo used to do was really, where they really did dabble in the internet a lot. Primarily in Japan, you know? Where they had, like, their own internet. Like, they were, like, the original people that made their internet services, right? Not terribly amazing, but for the time, they were pioneering something new. So, like, this, this is, you know, it's believable. But damn, man. You could, like, that was actually really interesting. To download a game from a tv channel on a limited time like nowadays you probably take it for granted right you just fire up xbox live playstation network the wii store steam and just download stuff to your heart's content back then digital distribution used to be a limited time per day and even then it wasn't even a guarantee shit but these were some of the games you could download on it which my god i wish i could fucking play this god damn that'd be really really interesting you can emulate the bias you can see you know what Let's. I'll make a video on it. You know, how about uh, if you all want? Do you want me to make a video on the Stella View? Because we could have a fucking lulzy time checking out this system. Because this is my. That would be me popping a cherry on a system I've never even touched. With all the variations offered, you might lose the overview. There are some uh, notes for the pre-patched version. Blah blah. BS Zelda. So what? What is? What is BS Zelda again? No, this is just emulating again. Um. Yeah. Don't. I don't need emulation legals. Let me go see. Uh. I'm trying to find like the site. The site storyline is a little. This the site's the site's a little bit interesting. Oh, it's giving me the Zelda timeline, dude. You can you can piss off. That's a fucking, whew, That's a spooky thing. Let me open up BS Zelda information. So it was a remake of the NES game The Legend of Zelda, released for the Stellaview attachment for the Super Famicom in Japan. BS stands for Broadcast Teleview, we know this. Using the add-on, gamers could download the game from the satellite to save it onto either the base unit's memory or onto a BSX special broadcast cassette. But only Triforce of the Gods could be played outside of broadcast. Oh, so you... What? You would actually have to, like... So it was, like, live digital gaming? So it's, like, between 8 to 9, you had to play this game, and that was it? That was all? You couldn't fucking... That's so weird! 
Oh my god! The gameplay was... Man, they were really ahead of their time, weren't they? The gameplay was identical to the predecessor, but the maximum rupees were increased to allow you more than 1,000 rather than 255. The overworld was heavily altered and dungeons were completely different. The game was broadcasted in two versions, Map 1 and Map 2. Map 1 is sometimes referred to as a third quest. In references to the LOZ second quest, Map 2 would therefore be a fourth quest. Yeah, interesting. But uh, let's, go, let's go more into it. Hold on, here we go. The game was divided in... Oh my god, it was episode... Wait a minute. The game was played in real time. An on-screen clock showed the current time. And at various times... That's, that's where the time is, if you can see it on there, right? Uh, certain events would appear. The game pauses for a moment before making a change. Sometimes the enemies are killed or stunned. Sometimes a fairy appears, and occasionally the player is granted unlimited quantities of one of their items for a limited time. Bombs, boomerangs, and candles can all be auto-upgraded this way, and will never run out of ammunition until the clock reaches the ending value. The game was divided into four weekly. It was the fucking first episodic game, dude. These episodes were downloaded from the satellite and played live, just as a TV program. That is, that's so fucking. Due to technical limitations, the download time was a whole seven minutes just for one episode. Probably. The Stella View was also used to broadcast actual video game themed shows, probably containing ads and such to promote Nintendo games. Jesus, man. That's so fucking cool for Dude, if you were a kid back in your day, you're fucking dank as shit imaginable. Man. That's so that's so epic. The player could configure their names and genders in a Stella View game selection interface. It is then carried across to the game, similar to Mii's and Wii's games. The characters themselves are nameless in-game. In actuality, they're Stella View mascots. Oh my god, you could self-insert yourself. This sounds... I gotta play this. We. I've gotta make this video. Holy shit. Live voice was... They even had voices on that? Really? Oh my god. Free gifts. Oh, like mystery gifts and shit. Wow. From 1995 to 97 lasted this fucking... Oh, that was reruns and shit, too. Wow. A TV show game. I <laughs> I don't know what to say. This blows my mind. Like, it might not seem a lot to some people, but shit. That's really fucking cool, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so... This is probably why they have like a. This is probably why you have to find something deeper because Nintendo would cease and desist this shit instantly. Jesus Christ! You know what? I love it. I love it a lot, ladies and gentlemen. I think I have to give my. I'm gonna have to giant give claps of my hands right now because fuck me, that is so freaking cool. Jeez, man! Wow. Well, let's. Uh, oh wait, due to the live nature of the game, it is oh cannot be played. Probably. The ROM dumps were disrupted, but some hackers hit the indoors in manual, so that we were able to emulate and play this game. Oh, so they patched it up unofficially to fix up the game. That's really sweet. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to end this right over here, because fuck me, we've seen basically as much as I could really see on BS Le Legend of Zelda. We might have to look into it definitely as a video, but for now, let's back out of this and go to something else. What is this? The read technique is a method for questioning suspects to try to assess their credibility. Suspe supporters argue that the read technique is useful in extracting information from otherwise unwilling. Su oh, what the fuck is my life, dude? I'm learning how we're learning how to interrogate people on the internet. <laughs> Jesus Christ. While critics have charged the technique can elicit false confessions from innocent persons, especially children. The term Reed technique is a registered trademark of the firm Johnny e. Reed. And let me just take these headphones off. I look retarded. Johnny e. Reed and Associates, which offer training courses in the methods they have devised. While the technique is widely used by law enforcement agencies in North America, it has been criticized for its industry of eliciting false confessions. Okay. So let's go look at how to use the read technique. Now, as far as I know, the only fucking interrogation technique I know that elicits quick, fast, sometimes false response, probably like waterboarding, right? Like, for those of you who don't know what waterboarding is, it's like when you tie someone down, put like a rag over their head and just like dump water so it feels like they're drowning. But let's try the read technique. The read technique consists of a three-phase process beginning with fact analysis followed by the behavior analysis interview, a non-accusatory interview designed to develop investigative and behavioral, behavioral information. I can't read today. Followed when appropriate by the read, read nine steps of interrogation. In the read technique, interrogation is an accusatory process in which the investigator tells the suspect that there is no doubt as to his or her guilt. 
So basically, you just tell them, yeah, they're guilty off the bat. There's no innocent until proven guilty bullshit. The interrogation is in the form of a monologue, but I wouldn't be saying that's bullshit. Sorry for that, but presented by the investigator rather than a question and answer format. The demeanor of the investigator during the course of an interrogation is ideally understanding, patient, and non-demeaning. Okay, so be courteous and respectful. So basically, it's like if I was the investigator and like, you know, I was fucking going after you for like murder, right? I'd look at you and be like, well, you committed murder. All right, so now we just have to get to the get to the cause of why you killed someone, you know? The re-technique user's goal is to make the suspect gradually more comfortable with confessing. This is accomplished by the investigator's first imagining and then offering the suspects various psychological constructs as justification for their behavior. For example, an admission of guilt might be prompted by the question, did you plan this out or did it just happen on the spur of the moment? This technique uses a loaded question that contains the unspoken implicit assumption of guilt. The idea is that the person under interrogation must catch the hidden assumption and contest it to avoid the trap. Critics regard this strategy as hazardous, arguing that it is subject to confirmation bias, likely to reinforce inaccurate beliefs or assumptions. So yeah, essentially, if you keep telling somebody they kept on killing someone, right? Like if you tell somebody, oh, you fucking, you, you know, you, you, you set off explosives or something like that, for example... The, eventually you keep loading them up until they just start believing the shit that you keep spewing them. And that's why you lead to the fucking confession. That's why some people say it's false confessions as well. So here's the nine steps. If you're ever interrogating someone, God, if you're ever in any interrogate or interrogatory situation, direct confrontation. Advise the suspect that the evidence has left the police to this individual as a suspect. Offer the person an early opportunity to explain why the offense took place. Get them right where it's at. Number two, try to shift the blame away from the suspect to some other person or set of circumstances that prompted the suspect to commit the crime. That is, develop themes containing reasons that will psychologically justify or excuse the crimes. Themes may be developed or changed to find one that uh, which the accused is the most responsive. Okay, so basically give them a motive that they'll even believe. Number three, try to discourage the suspect from denying his or her guilt. All right, so basically tell them, no, you fucking did it. We know you did. Number four, at this point, the accused will often give a reason why he or she did not or did not commit the crime. Try to use this to move towards the confession. All right, basically use their own fucking gun against them. Number five, reinforce sincerity to ensure that the suspect is receptive. Be nice, be calm. So, you know, if you fucking be an asshole to someone, you're going to shut them out. Number six, the suspect will become quieter and listen. Move the theme discussion towards offering alternatives. Is the suspect cries at this point, infer guilt. Okay, all right. You know, if they cry, they fucking did the crime. Number seven, pose the alternative question, giving two choices for what happened, one more socially acceptable than the other. The suspect is uh, expected to choose the easier option, but whichever alternative the suspect chooses, guilt is admitted. There is always a third option, which is to maintain that they did not commit the crime. Number eight, lead the suspect to repeat the admission of guilt in front of witnesses and develop corroborating information to establish the validity of the confession. Number nine, document the suspect's admission or confession or have him or her prepare a recorded statement, audio, video, or written. Holy shit. You know what it is? It's fucking straight up manipulation, dude. Now, uh, they had a basic, like, basically people are against this just due to the fact that, again, it could lead to false confessionals. It's a real thing. You know, there there's a reason why, like, if you ever look at... This is me back in like college. I did a little law class and in the law class we actually covered interrogations like it's not exactly the read technique, but there was like a lot of um how should I say a lot of cases where people were arrested and they were given they were they were basically admitted to guilt just uh just because they they were put into a situation with interrogators where they fucking confused the shit out of them, right? Like like cuz that's the thing when you it's not like this is a one-day sort of one-and-done deal, right? This can happen in the process of weeks, right? So, like, you could have an investigator sitting you down for, say, three weeks total and every single day break you down to the point where you basically fall through. It's not even just this technique. It could really be anything. And it's a fucked up thing that happens, but it happens regardless. Like, there's a lot of investigators who want to get to the meat of something. And there's a lot of people that even when you say guilt until innocent – or sorry, innocent until guilty – you still want to fucking you you want to get you want to get whatever your whatever's in your head right like if an investigator has bias they have fucking bias and they're gonna fucking go after you and they're gonna go after your heart there could be a lot of reasons for that and this thing unfortunately is very fucking real and a lot of people every year around the world get into shit like this where they might not even have done something wrong but because you're in this nine step process of breaking somebody down 
they're going to admit to something they never did. And boom, case closed, end of that, nothing's done, wrong person gets busted, and the people who did the crime fucking walk away. And it's fucked up, but, you know, it's a thing that happens. Now, I'm not going to turn this deep web into a fucking law class. It's not going to happen here. But that was the read technique. Why the hell this had to be on the deep web, I don't understand. Because some, sometimes you're just like, what the fuck? Why? What, 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 why? All right, well, get the fuck out of here. Let's go, let's go hit up something else and just uh, just see what other sites we can come across. So here's Elena Filatova. Now, I think I might have shown this to you before. I don't know why. I think I've seen this woman somewhere in the past, but I'm not exactly sure. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a Freenet site. Elena Filatova, which I think a lot of the Freenet and Tor sites kind of like uh, coincide with each other. But anyways, this is a ghost town introduction. My name is Elena. I run this website and I don't have anything to sell. What I do have is my motorbike and the absolute freedom to ride it wherever curiosity and the speed demon take me. The page is maintained by the author, but when internet traffic is heavy, it may be down occasionally. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a woman who, thank God, doesn't have shit for me to fucking buy. But apparently, she has an amazing Kawasaki motorcycle. And she rides wherever the fuck she feels like it. Now, biking. I have ridden all my life, and over the years, I have owned several different motorbikes. I ended my search for a perfect bike with a big ninja. Man, I, I wish I could drive a bike, but, like, I don't do it just because, like, fucking my mom would fucking die if she saw me on a motorbike. We've, we've She's seen some pretty bad shit, so she couldn't see me on something like that. That boasts a mature 147 horsepower. That's serious shit. It's as fast as a bullet and comfortable for a, for long trips. I travel a lot, and one of my favorite destinations leads north from Kaiv towards so-called Chernobyl Dead Zone, which is 130 kilometers from my home. Why my favorite? Because no one can take long rides there on empty roads. The people there all left, and nature is blooming. There are beautiful woods and lakes, in places where roads have not been traveled by trucks or army vehicles. They are in the same condition they were 20 years ago, and it's fucked to think, man. That place has been gone for two decades plus now, except for an occasional blade of grass or some tree that discovered a crack to spring through. Time does not ruin roads, so they may stay this way until they can be open to normal traffic again. A few centuries from now, yeah? You fuck, dude. It's kind of scary like that's like in my lifetime i want to travel to like i want to i want to travel to chernobyl at least once you know under obvious like safety and shit just so i can like see like how dead because like if you go <coughs> you probably probably go to chernobyl it feels like you're stepped back in time a lot right because that's like soviet era shit and you're like you're fucking you're this before i was really even fucking born so it's like i want to go there dude i want to see i want to see something older than me right Rowentjens. To begin our journey, we must learn a little something about radiation. It is really very simple, and the device we use for measuring radiations is called a Geiger counter. I knew that. If you flick it on Kive, it'll measure about 12 to 16 micro engines per hour. In a typical city of Russia or America, it will read 10 to 12 micro per hour. In the center of many European cities, there are 20 micro per hour. The radioactivity of the stone. 1,000 micros equal one micro an engine and one thousand milli oh this is we're milli to one okay so one is a hundred thousand times the average radiation of a typical city a dose of 500 within five hours is fatal to humans yeah of course interestingly it takes about two two and a half times that dosage to kill a chicken and over a hundred times that to kill a cockroach yeah that's where the whole like cockroach thing comes from right like when the world fucking ends right like it's probably back then when, like, uh, the U.S. and Russia both had, like, nukes. They still do, like, a lot of fucking nukes. But they had so many nukes at the time. They could have ended the world, like, what, seven or eight times? But, like, that's when people were like, if the fucking, if, if shit goes to hell and the world's fucking gone, then cockroaches are the only thing that's going to, cockroaches and ants are going to be the only things that are going to live out of it, right? Anyways, the sort of radiation level cannot be found in Chernobyl now. In the first days after explosion, some places around the reactor were emitting 3 to 30 radiation per hour. The firemen who were sent to put out the reactor fire were fried on the spot by gamma... Ouch, man. That's fucked. The remains of the reactor were entombed within an enormous steel and concrete sarcophagus, so it is now relatively safe to travel to the area, as long as one does not step off the roadway and did not stick out in the wrong places. The map above shows all our journey through the dead zone. She actually went in? Fuck me, let's read this. Radiation went in soil and now in apples and mushrooms. It is not retained by asphalt, which makes ride through the areas possible. I've never had a problem with the dosimeter guys who man the checkpoints. They are experts. If they find radiation on your vehicle, they'll give it a chemical shower. I don't count those couple of times when experts try to invent an excuse to give me a shower. 
because those had a lot more to do with physical biology than biological physics. Okay, all right, yeah, yeah, Elena, people were just hitting on you left and right, weren't they? Anyways, let's go around to the next page, because I kind of want to see what Elena did. That's pretty fucking impressive, the fact that she went out and fucking did what she could. Here she has, like, high-resolution photos and videos of Chernobyl. Interesting. She's a fucking, she's a trooper, let me tell you. 600 years. On the Friday evening of 1986, a reactor crew at Chernobyl 4 prepared to run a test to the next day to see how long the turbines would keep spinning and producing power of the electrical equipment. This was a dangerous test, had it been done before. Uh, as a part of the preparation, they disabled some critical control systems, including the automatic shutdown safety mechanisms. The operator moved to shut down the reactor in its low power mode, and a domino effect of previous errors caused a sharp power surge, triggering a tremendous steam explosion which blew the thousand ton cap on the nuclear containment west vessel and raised it in the air. Yeah, oh my fucking god, dude. Jesus. You look through it, she's basically giving you the history of like chernobyl right now like she's telling you how like people fucking thought th thought they were smart and you know the fucking the, 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 they got they got fucked pretty bad let's go to the photo gallery over here real quick yeah i want a nuclear flower it takes me to a whole different site i don't think i, I don't think this is her fo taking photos of it but this is like photos of the area around there so like yeah exactly. wow these are really fucking well done so like if you look around over here you can see like all the stuff like all the stuff is still there as it is you know like, everything is still, like, look at those helicopters just sitting over there. Like, jeez, man. I'm telling you, it's like, it's like a real-life snapshot, you know what I mean? It's like just a real-life photograph. It almost looks like Pyongyang, to be honest. It looks like a real-life photograph, like, like, that you can just walk into, you know what I mean? Like, nothing has ever changed. It's as static as it has ever been. Jesus, man. To think, dude, that's one of the places where, like, like Call of Duty, I hate to be making that reference out of nowhere, but uh, it said it right. There was, like, thousands of people that used to live here, and now, now, now it is legit just a fucking ghost town, you know? Like, look at that shit. It's just gone. It looks like a daisy map, to be honest. Jesus. I mean, hopefully in the uh, in the near future, when it when it when you can inhabit it again, like, hopefully they can look at it and not make the same nuclear mistakes. Yeah, here she has, like, a Geiger counter, it seems. And they have, like, legit signposting. It says, if you go past the sign, motherfucker, prepare to have your balls fried off. <laughs> you know what I mean? My God. It's so chilling to, like, look at. Here, let's go back to Elena, though. Dude, where, where, where she went to. Next page. Let's go. Let's see. Let's see Elena stuff. So she has a whole, like, book written over here. If you like Ghost Town 2, Chapter 3. Damn, man. We're just trying to open it up. Yeah, Freenet takes a little bit of while to open up, it seems. But, uh, you know, it's just because, again, it's trying to, like, capture as many little, you know, internet packets as it could to uh, to reassemble this actual page, which you sort of have to be a little patient for. In the meantime, we can just look at a couple couple more of these, to be honest. Again, man, it's like people just exploring this stuff on their own. That, I wonder if this is her, though. Is this her? I don't know. She, like, linked to it, so I assume it's her. Oh, my God, dude. This is very fucking chilling, man shit i mean if i lived around there i probably might have made the attempt to go in there just because like i really like going into places like this oh my god oh my lord that's so fucking chilling dude gas masks the little doll the f oh my god that's fucking weird unfortunately we don't have enough data for it shit i was about to read elena's fucking story but at least we got elena's photo collection to kind of look at so i guess this is really a woman who made a deep web. i don't know why she needed to make a deep website because like her photos are clearly on the clear web but i don't know why she needed a deep website for all of this anyways maybe it's because like she was trying to avoid being busted but i mean you fucking gave your name out of all things regardless i think i'm gonna maybe it's just a mirror i don't know regardless i'm just gonna end out leaving from the site interesting stuff to look at really 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 like if you're if you're ever interested in this kind of stuff i think this is a site you should head to because it's somebody that has clear-cut experience and where they went to and not only that but they've got they've got some pretty interesting photographs that they've taken of the whole place you know very jesus man and that, ladies and gentlemen, was our Deep Web video of the week, Deep Web Browsing, episode number 86. So we found some interesting sites today. We found some interesting video game-related material. We found some interesting Chernobyl-related material. I think out of everything, we found probably the most inter interesting material that I found. I know I kind of say that every week, but 
This week, I'm fucking damn sure because every single website that I went to has completely encapsulated me and I hope it encapsulated you as much as it did me. I like it when we come across stuff like this where it's not like spooky, killing, you know, all that kind of stuff. Where it's just, you know, interesting factoids, interesting things we learn and sometimes we come across Sorp films and that just fucking sucks me away. So I'm going to end this video over here. I think I've taken up too much of your time already. Hope you have an amazing Sunday. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like it if you dislike it. This has been Deep Web Browsing, episode number 86. I'm Mudahar, and I am out. Thank you.